Kids, how's it going? Good to see you guys. What's today? Happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday all day today. It has been a crazy day today. Let me check chat and see how you guys are doing. Hey, Patrice. April, Rose, Maisha, Hydra, Erica, Lori. Hey, guys. Hey, Tisha. Hey, Melissa. Hey, It's. Anna, good to see you. Hey, Monica. Hey, Danny. Has anyone ordered the books from AAPC? How long does it take to receive them? They didn't give me a tracking number. Um, I order them every May when I get back my tax return every year. And then they come out whenever they issued, like in October. Some of them come out in December. And then, like, the hit picks come out in January. So... I always have to wait a really long time for those, so it just depends on when you order them and stuff. They usually take a little while. They're no, um, they're definitely not as fast as Amazon or any other kind of online store, that's for sure. I hope you get yours soon. <laughs> Change the account number, account name every week. Ah, oh, it's Latoya. Hey guys, good to see you. I like Hydra. I like that one. I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. I did not learn phonics when I was a child, so I'm at a big disadvantage. Um, but um, I like the Hydra part. Hey, Leanne. Hey, Eva. How's everybody doing? <laughs> I'm so used to Amazon, too. Me, too. I like eBay, Poshmark, you know, anything that has that priority mail, and they ship it really, really fast. Hey, Rut. Good to see you. Where's everybody from, and when are you going to take your exam? Just curious. I got a new phone today. It's uploading all of its data and transferring. I hate that when you have to have a new phone and you got to reset every darn app you have on your phone and all that stuff. But it was too good of a good deal, I guess. I don't know. The IT director told me I had to do it. But we'll see. Um, meanwhile... While that is uploading, we got some new, I was reading about a new credit thing that um, is happening. They're going back to last year's taxes, and if you made less than 56 for an individual or for married het, married couple, $63,000, you might get a tax return from last year's taxes, but not really why I was here. What I was going to show you today was this. I was working yesterday on the female reproductive system. We did the first two or three pages of my notes last night on TikTok. The replay of that is available on uh, YouTube here if you are a YouTube member. But I was going to show you how I do my anatomy. So what I do is, in the CPT book, anytime they have an anatomy picture, I just type in exactly what they have written as the title. Into our trusty old Google. But then right after I do that, I type the word function. And then I let Google do its thing. And then I hit images. And that way I get up pictures of what this is. 
and those pictures are usually labeled with better labels and what I'm looking for is something that gives me just a little sentence about what each body part does something like that right there that gives me the ovary and then it tells me what it does what does the ovary do um, it's the site for storage and development of oocytes so that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and next to ovary I'm gonna put down its function and any little thing like this frimbrae the fundus of the uterus any one of those things I'm gonna write down each one of their functions and I'm gonna try to do it in the smallest condensed words possible so that's why I'm looking here also if there's body parts that aren't labeled here I'm gonna label them um, and draw them in so that's what I like to do I like to look for things that list out what the body parts are and then tiny little paragraphs about what's going on with each one of those one of my favorite anatomy books just happened to be in the house somebody was going through the um, um, surgery what's the people that I can't think of the course now um, surgery tech school someone in my house at one time was going to go through that and they had this old book called the world's best anatomical chart left over from that and I like it too because again it has body parts but it's also got tiny little paragraphs that go along with each little thing it's not book of like whole pages of things it just lists out the body part with a small little paragraph about it and I really like that kind of stuff because I don't need a ton of information um, but I do like this book and this is an older version it's still applicable um, if by chance you see any of these online for super cheap or at the um, Goodwill or thrift store um, I like it because it's condensed it, this is all it says about the heart and this is all it says about the lungs I love that you know anything that you can get that is super simple that just tells you small little things these are some allergies and diseases and stuff but um, I like this one too but I don't want y'all buying anything really save your money if you can but you'd be surprised where some of these books might be if you happen to find or know any family members who have been through any kind of medical thing at all they might have something like this laying around um, but also Google is a great resource. They've got enough information. You'd never have to buy anything anyway. And of course, don't forget about your uh, ICD-10 books because I have a feeling that's where the AAPC gets all their anatomy questions anyway. So if we were to go to the OB section anyway in our ICD-10 book, right before you code anything in OB and delivery right you're gonna actually have all the anatomy broken down as to body parts and then this is telling you exactly what's going on in tiny little paragraphs um, what the ovaries do what the fallopian tubes do what the uterus does um, and I think this is where they got one of their questions, one of my very first questions. And I did OB and delivery for a decade, and I didn't even know what this was. This skein's gland right there, it's a lesser, lesser vestibular um, gland that secretes mucus. We never called it that. But that particular question was on my exam, my very first question for this. And I did OB and delivery forever. And I had no idea first question out of the gate for this. And I had no clue. But anyway, 
I knew what a Barthons. We did 10 million of those surgeries all the time, but never with the skein's gland. But anyway, um, they're really good at finding anything that that is minuscule that is not talked about in regular doctor's office stuff or that is seen. Um, but it's right here in your um, ICD-10 book. If you have... AAPC's version of the AA, the ICD-10 book, that is. Um, that's, I think that's where they get their anatomy questions, is from here. After they talk about the female reproductive system, then they go into any diseases or common pathogens with each one of these and talk about any diseases and stuff. So that's where they get all their anatomy stuff before you start actually diagnose coding this stuff. But anyway, I just thought that was helpful for you guys so that you would know how to update your anatomy notes inside your CPT book. If you didn't buy my notes and you want to do it yourself, you can absolutely do it yourself. You and Google can have at it. And sometimes... Some of your friends or family members may even have books or the library could have those books that you could rent and you could use those too. Don't want y'all spending a lot of money, you know, on stuff. But um, let's see, what, what can we draw about here? Let's see. The site of fertilization is what's going on in our uterine tube, right? So we're going to write that right there. And then I'll check chat and see what y'all been talking about. Let me know if y'all got any questions. Before we get started with our questions, I got a ton of E&M questions because I took an E&M exam today for the CPMA course. I've already got the cer certification but I'm finishing up the course that I also purchased. And some of the questions are pretty cool, so I thought y'all might want to see some of them. Or some variations of them. Site of fertilization. Turn off my space heater. Mmm. When are y'all taking y'all's exams? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I got to read all these chats. I'm going to give y'all the first question for tonight. Let me get rid of the camera real quick. There we go. So you guys can see the question. Remember, if the questions are fuzzy, you guys can tap the screen of your YouTube channel at the very top. There's a little settings or yes settings wheel you can change your settings from a poor quality that is default to the higher quality like 1080p and you'll be able to see a lot better let's see how many this one's going to be two pages long but for now be sure and don't read the question. If you're reading the question, you're doing it wrong. Be sure, first things first, what type of code is 99238? What's its header? Find all the headers for each answer. If we were to code whatever this is, you need to know what headers these are under. All of them. We don't do the process of elimination or similarities or anything really in E and M. We do that in all the other sections, but not in E and M. Just find your headers. I'm so glad you like E and M. And then, um, and then we'll move on. What kind of header is above nine nine two three eight? Discharge. Good. Discharge, what kind of header is 99221? C 
six days. I'm looking. Second attempt, March 1st, Texas, Indiana, New Jersey. April, March, North Carolina, Pennsylvania. Has anybody still got snow? February, Maine, oh my. Saturday, April, oh, I'm so excited. Hopefully in the spring, Juanita. Indiana, one of my best friends lives in Indiana. Gosh, we've been friends since Travis was 14 months old. She's a cardiac Aryan there in Indiana. Now she says she's a slumlord, <laughs> but she has some rental properties. Uh, Clayton, April 3rd, March, Lori, Oklahoma. My Aunt Candy, who used to be the world champion, the Tom Twirler, way back in the day when she was in college at Memphis State University, lives in Oklahoma. She's the one with the son. It's her baby boy, Nicholas, who is going through brain cancer right now. My, lo my little cousin, he's only 41. He's a police officer in Tulsa. Him and his wife both are, and um, he's dealing with that right now. Just started chemotherapy and radiation this week. Um, I just got my results for my COC, failed, but I get another chance. That's awesome. COC is a little, is a little bit more difficult for sure because you've got the difference between facilities and doctor's offices, and they don't really cover that a lot in um, CPC, but remember if it's ever facility in the question, then that means the hospital is billing for their services. And then if it says physician, then you know the physician is billing for their services at the hospital, which is different than hospital charges. That's one of the main things I see we've got to worry about with um, COC and then making sure that if it's Medicare, you know you're in hip picks. <clears throat> You'll do much better the second time around. Um, New York. I was born in Rome, New York. Hello from Long Island. Texas in April. April's my birthday month, which is a very lucky month. You will do great. I always have a ton of people pass in April. I'm so glad that tipped helped Juanita. Patrice. Yeah, it's a nice book. Yeah, you got an old old anatomy book from way back when. That's awesome. Yes, we have this one is Admit Hospital. Sorry. And what's our 233 and 232? Still reading up in chat. Established Los Angeles. You are in Duran country. Do you watch Duran on TikTok? Him one wheeling around your city. Snow pretty much has melted away. Okay. I remember last year there was a lot of snow, a lot of places. Subsequent hospital care. Yep. Now, step two after you do this. Don't read the question. Go to the last sentence of the question and read the last sentence. Make sure you are going to be coding what you think you are coding. Sometimes here it may say, code the procedure, you know, and you're like, 
ooh, I thought I was coding an E and M or something. It's just really weird. Or code for the cardiologist. And up here, you thought you were billing for the ER doctor because they were all talking about the ER doctor. Always go down. This is step two. Go see what the last sentence says before you worry about anything else. This one doesn't look like it's directing us to anything funny. It is whatever it is in this example we are going to be billing. So what's our patient's status? Where are they? And that doesn't mean physically. It means what does the doctor consider this patient? Where are they at as far as the status from the physician point of view? That will help direct you to what answer is correct. I'm going to try to stay as quiet as I can on these E&Ms and see what answers you guys come up with. And then I'll tell you how I did. Would have come up with the answer. I've got an A and a D from April and Nero. Kelly. Kelly says inpatient. She's saying B. So I have a D, an A, a B, a D, a B, a D, <laughs> another D, how many do we have on right now? Forty-nine of you guys. Anybody else brave enough? And let's give away some YouTube memberships. Remember that a lot of times, if I can, where's my little button? Ooh, where is my button? Did YouTube take away my little thing? I can't find. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to give away some. I can't find my little thing. They're changing stuff on me. Let me see if I can get to it on my phone. What do you guys think the answer is? We've got B's, D's, A's. All right. So my patient status, where is the patient? The patient was admitted a day ago. So that tells me this doctor is not going to bill an admit code. Did the doctor discharge them today? Down here it says patient improving, a pulmonary consult is requested. So it does not look like they're going home anytime soon. So I would get rid of the discharge. That leaves me with these two, which are the most similar anyway. They're both subsequent hospital diff, um, e and M codes. Three, two is 35 minutes or moderate. And 33 is 50 minutes or high. Do I have time or MDM listed? I don't think so. So if I have to do MDM, what was the problem list for the patient? My problem list is chest pain due to aspiration of pneumonia. They're tacky, they're crackling, so 
my problem list would be this is an illness do they have a history of anything else ventilator management I don't think they have a history of anything else so this is an illness right it's not a chronic condition so an illness An acute illness with symptomatic sy symptoms would be moderate. So our problem list is moderate. Our data that was reviewed, what did we look at today? These things were ordered yesterday, so they were counted towards an MDM yesterday on whoever admitted the patient so going over them today cannot be counted so my data would have to be minimal or zero and then my risk of letting the patient remain on the IV antibiotics in the hospital and doing a consult we did one outside referral for a discussion of management from like category three. Um, did he change meds or anything? Support, just continued the antibiotics, the med management. So we continued the med management. So our risk would be the moderate. So we have two that are moderate. So we know we would not bill the high. Okay, guys, I'm back. Let's see. Can you guys hear and see me now? y'all hear and see me now I have like 40,000 tabs open and I really needed to reboot my computer before I started this because we were testing out our new internet today by pushing it to the extreme and I just did not have enough time to finish everything that I wanted to do before I started the live let me make sure. Good, good, good. All right, let me turn off the camera. Good, good, good. Hey guys, sorry. I needed to, I need to really reboot my computer before today's live, but just didn't get enough chance. Today was crazy. Crazy, crazy busy. I hope this one made sense. Let's see, our rationale is that our MDM was moderate due to an acute illness, yeah, with symptoms for pneumonia. The labs and radiation, radiology <laughs> tests were ordered on a previous visit and you do not get credit for those. Just remember that particular key point when you're doing any kind of coding exam that if you're reviewing results that was ordered previous visit remember you can't count that as part of today's MDM that's double dipping so be sure you remember that for any kind of coding exam especially for my COC person because that will be one of the items on COC for sure this is, that's a bit advanced for CPC, but still, it's good to know. 
Here's another question I saw today that was new. I've not ever presented. I thought it was kind of cool. When referencing the CPT AMA E&M guidelines for selecting the level of E&M, I need to reboot my computer. It's going to die. Um, what is one of the amount, one of the options in amount and or complexity of data to be reviewed and analyzed for moderate level? If we're at the moderate level, must we meet category three? Must we meet the required of at least two to three? Should we use any combination of three category ones or any combination of category two? What do you think the answer would be? This would be answered with page nine and 10 of your AMA book. If you're in the 2024 one, if you're in the 2023 one, let me see. We would be on page eight and nine. Did I lose everybody again? We got B's and C. Y'all still can't hear me again? We can hear you, okay. Some can, some can't. Thank y'all for the thumbs up too, by the way. I see that I've already got 16 likes on the YouTube page. That's awesome. Thanks, Twinkle. Thanks, Tish. All right. Now we're getting some more C's. Some more B's. I thought, too, the, um, the at least two out of three would have been a correct answer, too. which is the B, but looking for similarities in these, we've got two that say must and must, and then we've got two that start out with any. What does our book use? Our book uses must and it also uses any. <laughs> it has both inside the descriptors, so that's not helpful as I thought it was going to be. When it says the word must in the in the book, let me get my camera on. Right there. It says must meet the requirements. What this question has, it says must meet category three or must meet the requirements of at least two out of three categories. It does say that, which is in the B but it doesn't say must meet the category, which is answer A. So we can definitely get rid of A. We're looking for data to be reviewed in moderate so we need to make sure we're down here in this category, right here under moderate. 
and when we're looking for the answer. When it's talking about categories, it does have a category one, and then the rest of them are category three, category two, is test, documentation, When we're doing moderate, it says we must have any combination of three of the following. When we look at answer B, that one says two out of three because we were in the low. Low says two out of three, but the moderate says three. So we know we got to get rid of B too. Category two is not test and documentations, right? It's independent interpretation of test. The way they have it written in D is wrong. So the only one that is correct is C. That make any sense to anybody? There's your rationale. I have to play around with this one and see if I can come up with a better way of explaining it, but know that C is the correct answer that they were looking at. Make sure you're under the correct moderate, under data, and then look for the correct answer. I got spaces where there's not supposed to be spaces. Here's an E and M one for you guys to mull over. You guys tell me what you think the answer is. Don't forget that you are not looking at the question yet. You are looking up your header differences between your E and M codes. Each E and M code is different and has a different header. So you don't even need to worry about the diagnoses and stuff. Because if you get the first E and M right, then you've got the right answer and you could move on. But it is interesting that this one has four diagnoses, this one has one, this one has two diagnoses, and this one has four diagnoses. It's kind of cool, but technically you're not having to worry about any of this. These two are established. These two are new. Is your patient new or established? Figure that out first. You'll get yourself down to a 50-50 shot. What do you guys think the answer is? Don't be uh, shy. Shout it out. I'll try to figure out what's going on with YouTube. What in the heck is going on with my YouTube? Why can't I? App cannot op open up right now. It is being backed up. Of course. I think it's because I'm backing up my cell phone. I can't access sending out sub subscriptions right now. That is infuriating. That's so weird. Try to go another route. Uh, can't open up. 
the app is being backed up right now. Try again later. Jeez Louise, how much longer do I have on this phone updating? Twenty-three more minutes. Lots of people said B. So our patient is returning to the provider. So you know right away you get rid of C and D because they're established. Now you just need to figure out are they low or moderate. What did we do for our patient today? We prescribed antibiotics. Do we have a diagnosis? Patient has this right here. We know our antibiotic is drug maintenance, that's moderate. This diagnosis is an illness with symptoms, right? An acute illness with symptoms under moderate. So we got two that match, two out of three. Yep, we're moderate. Our prescription makes us moderate, and then the acute illness with symptoms makes the problem list moderate. So that you have both of those matching as moderate, then you can bill for moderate. If our illness had been just like a self-limited minor problem, like a splinter or a sprained ankle, even just a tibia fracture. Something. Okay, guys. Sorry, I'm back. Here's your next question. Are we low, high, moderate, or straightforward? Sorry, guys. I'm trying really hard not to reboot my computer, <laughs> but I probably need to. I'm trying to save it there, and then I want to save it also here. It is. I'm so sorry. What do you guys think the answer is for this one? According to the AMA E&M guidelines, the level of medical decision making given for the amount and complexity of data to be reviewed and analyzed when three x-rays are ordered and three unique labs are ordered is classified as moderate. I don't know. Did I write the question down correctly? Let's see.
Ja. The question is written wrong. Hold on. Because we were playing around with chat GPT to see if it could rewrite these questions correctly. And of course it can't. Huh. Of course not. All right. So this one. We know inside our E&M chart here that each unique test is counted as another point. Labs are one unique test. X-rays are one unique test. EKGs are one unique test. Echoes are one unique test. And ultrasounds are one unique test. Those kinds of things. You get different points for those. If you get a CBC and a basic metabolic panel, that's still only one point because it's all lab work. It's all kind of bundled. Now this one I had a question. How do they get moderate when that's just two of a combination? I only see two. If we have a bunch of lab work, even though it's, I don't know, what they mean by three unique labs. One could be a CBC. It's still blood work. Uh, one could be a, a complete metabolic panel. And then another one could be a protein. That's still all blood work, and those three blood works are still counted as one point. Here they've got three x-rays were ordered too. Well, all x-rays are supposed to be one point. We did a left arm, we did a chest x-ray, and we did a left leg right? All that would still be worth one point because they're all x-rays. If you have two points, two points according to this right here is under our limited, which is low, but they say Having three x-rays and three labs is moderate. I don't know, but maybe it's the unique labs. Maybe they're saying three of these are, one is blood work, one is urine, and one is sputum. That there because it's three different types, blood work, urine, and coughed up loogie, that would mean three points. X-rays, if those three X-rays are ordered, this is still going to be worth one point. It doesn't say the word unique next to it, so that would equal four points, which does get us to the moderate. What did you guys think about this one? There's our rationale for this one. They just didn't give me much information. Like they didn't say satisfies one category. And then that's it. They don't say much. <laughs> they don't say much. But I'm assuming... Instead of it all being three different bloods, it would have had to have been blood, urine, and sputum or something like that. Correct. Each individual CPT code is counted as one point data, not for all blood work. So if it's CBC, a complete blood panel, and a protein, because it's all separate CPT codes, 
but because it's all blood, that's only worth one point because it's all blood. Only if you do one blood, one urinalysis, and one sputum do you get to equal three points because it's unique as far as how we're gathering that. It could have been a throat culture, um, not just sputum, but like a throat culture um, and a urinalysis and the blood work. That could be counted as three separate points. But if all of them had been all blood work, then no, we could not count that as three points. That's still only one point. Just so you know, there's a difference there. There is a big difference. Each blood work has to be unique. Just wish the rationale was written out a little bit better. Three unique tests. This next one is two pages. Be sure and gather up what is your header for this one. Our 99291 is my favorite ENM. That's our critical care. Our 99232 and 33, those are subsequent hospitals, right? And then we've got my favorite critical care again. First, figure out your patient's status. Are we in critical care or are we doing subsequent hospital visit? Let's check out our second page. What do you guys think the answer is for this one? Your guideline for the unique test is on page 12, just in case you needed to have that. It talks about it here in the um, e &M guidelines about that the blood for blood is considered multiple results in the same unique test, serial blood glucose values, for instance, that kind of thing, um, all count as one unique test. They have overlapping elements, that kind of stuff. Anyway, they got some good examples right there in case y'all need it. Um, what page would that be in the 10, second column. What do you guys think the answer is for this one? And we'll do the second page here. And the answer's there.
Yep. Perfect. We got our 35 minutes of critical care code. Yep. Making our A answer correct. Perfect. What do you think about this next one? We've got two answers that are established and two answers that are new patient. Figure that out first. Then you can do your moderate, high, or your low and moderate. But get yourself down to 50-50 shot. Figure that out first. Let's see how many pages is this one? This one should be just This one, but I don't know. Yep, no. We've got Dramamine to be ordered right there. Just going to do some over-the-counter Dramamine. What do you guys think is the answer for this one? Yep, we've got prescriptions, not really. Over-the-counter meds is still moderate. OTCs is still moderate. And then we've got a blood work being drawn. And what is their diagnosis? Final diagnosis is su suspected vertigo, <laughs> but we also ordered an EKG. So unique test here because we got EKG and this metabolic panel and this complete blood count count as blood. So that's one point. This counts as another point. We've got two. We've got our moderate again. Because we got two of them done, not just one, and we got our OTCs. Get my spacing done right. Yes, our 214 is correct. We've got our undiagnosed uncertain problem, problem list. As moderate, we got our unique test, and we've got our risk of over-the-counter meds. All equal up to our 14. What about the next one here? We've got, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. We've got somebody being seen in a cruise ship. What kind of E&M service would we be able to bill for somebody being seen on a cruise ship? Hello, Julie, how are you doing? Good to see you. Ooh, 99499, or are we in the 99341s to 45s? Are we in our regular office visit new patient 99202s to 205s? Or are we in our nursing facilities for our 99304s to 306? <laughs> Let 
My phone has seven more minutes for it to stop backing up and updating apps. Let's hope. Where would we bill for a cruise ship? Still got 48 of you guys here. Think, hope, you refresh that. 49 and 23 likes. Thanks, guys. Ooh, now we got 50. What kind of codes would we use for a cruise ship? B. What did we have? Our home or resident services. If the patient is living on a cruise ship in a campsite, um, um, a hotel, a hostel, yep, all those places, then we utilize B, our resident or home services. <laughs> Y'all like that one? Yeah, that was a cool one. I remember there was a campground one on the CPC exam. Not last year, but the year before. So, 2022? Um, it was around for a while, so it could come back at any time. But our code sets were different back then, and we didn't have home or resident services codes back then. So it was coded something different. But anyway, they may bring it back one of these days, and I thought this one was cool. What about this one? Are we under initial admit hospital? Inpatient consultation, subsequent hospital visit, or established patient regular office visit. Let's go check out our last sentence. Make sure we are coding what we think we're coding. This one's two pages long. We're going to end with a case that's going to be four pages long. So this one, we've got total time, 20 minutes down here, so that's super helpful. We do have IV of something. We're going to recheck some labs. Here's our diagnoses. And we have something that's exasperated. From what I see, where is our patient? What is our patient status? Where's our patient right now? Primary care physician is checking to see if there's any improvement. What is our patient status? Patient was admitted to the hospital two days ago. So we know we're not doing an admit and we did not do a discharge from today. All we did was increase some drugs, and recheck some lab. So we know we didn't discharge them. So again, we know we're not A because we didn't discharge. This is all about the PCP. They say PCP over and over again. So this is not a consultation. And we're not in the doctor's office, right? And this patient has not been admitted to the hospital 
or being seen by the primary care physician at the convenience of the primary care physician, it's because the patient really needed to be seen and really needed to be ad admitted because they have congestive heart failure. And it's still worsening, even today, even though the patient's been admitted for two days. So you know that we can only bill C. Indeed. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> All right. We've got one established patient, and the rest here start out with new patient. I'm only looking at the first set of codes. What's our last sentence say? A chest x-ray and cardiac workup was ordered. Select the appropriate visit. Okay. Is the patient new or established? Do we have a default if it's not mentioned? We got some D's, C's, D's. We do see that the patient is here for their initial visit. That means the first time they got seen, we know we can't bill an established, so we can get rid of A, at least. Now, do we have one CPT code or two? What's her problem list? What's her data? What's her risk? We do have total time on today's visit, which is 30 minutes. If we go to 202 and 03, 02 is 15 minutes, and then 03 is 30 minutes. So we know we can get rid of C. Now we just need to know would we build two visits or one? Now you see it? <laughs> yep. B is our answer. Perfect. Sorry, the font's a little small. I really rushed with these questions, trying to get them at least down for you guys today. Oh, gosh. Again, with spaces. This one's going to be two pages. Let's check out what our headers are. These two are established. And what kind of codes are our 391? What are those? This is our wellness exam. What was the kids being seen for today? What does our last sentence say? Q. 
patient was given a prescription. Mother will be bring the kid back after their cold and rash to get shots later. They have a cold, mild thrush. They have also had their four month wealth assessment today. What would we bill? Yeah, sometimes you have to refresh, Kelly. I'm still here, Kelly. Thank you for the 26 likes with the 43 of you that are still here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What do you guys think is the answer for this one? I think because I put on the baby box donate or something that I can't submit for anybody to have any gifts or something. I have lost the option for some reason to submit any YouTube subscriptions. That's so weird. But I guess it's because I put the the safe haven baby boxes as a thing today. Huh. I can't. And look, somebody donated 20 bucks. That must have been MK. Aw. So sweet. Yeah, I cannot throw in any new YouTube subscriptions tonight because of the way I was playing around with the settings today. I don't know what I did, but I'll fix it for um, Thursdays, and we'll give away 10 YouTube subscriptions that day. If I can figure out what I did wrong. What have we got for an answer with this one, guys? <laughs> that was you, Blondie? Aw. Thank you, Blondie. You're awesome. Those little baby boxes, you know, I've got two adopted sons. They were private adoptions, not foster care, but it's still, you know, adoption is still, you know, close to my heart, you know. And I don't want anybody to think that they don't have options where they just have to leave a newborn. You know, even up to older ages you can still use the boxes it doesn't have to be right after birth so I think those safe haven boxes are great um, you can walk away with no prosecution and you know just sometimes that's just what you have to do and that's as long as you got a safe place to put the baby then that's great perfect and um, you know no no harm no foul there and Later on in life, you know, maybe you two will meet up again if that's your choice. And that's wonderful. So, you know. Um, 
I adore my two little Cabbage Patch dolls that fell into my lap just as much as I do the IT director. You know, they're all my sons. So, and uh, I'm very appreciative to uh, bio parents that uh, let them land in my lap. <laughs> Can I put your teenager in the box? But that's the thing. We have to look up the different uh, laws, you know, and see. But, um, ooh. Mine are as sweet as can be when they want something, and when they don't want nothing, they're obstinate as can be. Oh my gosh. Just rude for no reason. There's just no rude, no reason to be that rude, but I have to keep reminding myself they're a ball of hormones. They are a ball of raging hormones. I just have to remember I was that way once. I was horrifying, you know, as a teenage girl, I'm sure, and, you know, so much that I never wanted any daughters. I only wanted sons, no matter what, anyway. Not that I would have cared what Travis and James were, but it's just landed in my lap as they were all my kids ended up being boys. Thank goodness, because girls are terrifying. You mamas of the daughters, y'all are stronger human beings than I am, that's for sure. <laughs> just wait till college hits, and they just hate you. I know, it does, it does. My oldest is in his 30s. He couldn't be sweeter, and um, all my boys are great no matter what. If I pout or really get my feelings hurt, you know, they, of course, do anything for you, which is wonderful because they're boys. Daughters, I'm not so sure of. They might laugh or soak up your tears. They're quite terrifying, so I don't know. I'd be scared. You have a 21-year-old? Aw. You always wanted to adopt. Aw. They got three babies this week in those boxes. I think two of them were in Indiana. So it's really cool. I watch their TikToks. And um, not that we ever get to see the babies or the moms or anything like that. We just hear them in the office cheering when they get an alert that they have um, a baby in a box because um, they're set up to where, you know, not only she gets an alert, but fire, ambulance, hospitals within a certain range, everybody gets alerted <laughs> so that people can come and get the baby. But they give the mom 60 seconds leave if she wants to. She can take a, a a bag out of there with contact info if she wants to get a hold of the people in the box, whatever, later on. But they give her a chance to leave, and then after that one minute is gone, then they alert everybody, you got a baby in the box? So. Aw, that's awesome. I wanted, I thought about donating an embryo one time or not like an embryo but like a um, one of my eggs right uh, my cousin Emily could not have children for some reason and I thought that would be a thing that I could do for her but she ended up adopting three daughters <laughs> three girls bless her heart One's in college now, and the other two are younger than my boys, but um, they're charging along wonderfully. They're doing great. This question, how many of you chose C? How many chose C? Go back. She was a school teacher, too. 
No one chose C. I didn't confuse anybody. Oh, thank you for the donation for the box. You guys are awesome. I don't think Arizona has one of these boxes. So I'd love to get Arizona one of these boxes. This one is just D. You guys did great on this one. Remember, the, the condition has to be significant where they do a full workup on it, like history and physical. So baby um, heart murmurs are a good example where you would only you would build both codes. If you had to build two codes for one visit, it has to be super significant issue. Babies having a, a cold, diaper rash, that's just normal stuff that babies have all the time. But if a baby has a heart murmur or a bowel obstruction, then we've got issues, right? And that would require two visits. Good gracious, in one day, you guys have donated $70 towards the box. They're only like three grand, so it's not like it's a whole lot. Um, but you do have to get a hold of like a fire department, and then you got to get some construction crews in to knock a hole in their wall and all this stuff. So there's other expenses later on, but a lot of the times you can get the city to get that donated to the firehouse where you put the box in, so that's kind of cool. But anyway, that's awesome. Thank you guys, you guys are great. What do you guys think about this question? I see a lot of critical care codes. Hmm. Is that CPR or an EKG maybe? I see some medicine codes. Let me see if I can't get this whole thing in one there we go. Screen. What do you guys think the answer is for this one? Some of the answers just have two CPT codes. Some of them have three. I like to count. What did I do today? Did I do three things? Did I do two things? Is one of the things global that I can't fill with something? You'd like to get a baby box in Nevada? That's awesome, Blondie. Yep, you remember me saying something about the thrush. That's awesome. Good. Yay! Lori has two boys. You guys are awesome. Oh my goodness. I set up this thing like at Christmas time, but then I forgot to attach it to videos. or didn't know how to anyway. And MK asked me sometime today on some message on YouTube. I was like, where's the link? And I can't find a link. I just have to attach it to videos. <laughs> you made my day. I have a four-year-old son, and I wonder if I would do the same in the future. <laughs> Yes, my mom keeps telling me it's time for another grandbaby since she has three nieces from my brothers. Yeah, my oldest, 32, he's still single. I don't know if I'll ever get any grandbabies one of these days. One of these days.
<laughs> Go get her number. You need a wife. Oh. Huh? Oh, Lord. What did we do today? We did CPR. We went and did direct activities with the paramedics for 30 minutes on two-way communication directing. Yep, 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 yep. Spend another hour critical care stabilizing the patient and performing CPR. CPR is included in the time of critical care. If you bill for CPR, you need to take the time away from critical care that that CPR was being billed for. That way you're not double billing for the CPR and including the CPR in your critical care. So we directed paramedics. We did critical care, and we did CPR, right? That sounds like three CPT codes to me. So we can get rid of A and D. What do you guys think now? Did we do critical care, and just another code, because both of these are critical care. Or did we do one CPT code, then critical care, and then another CPT code? Because both the 91 and the 92 are just critical care. So that just really counts as one thing, right? Critical care. So this technically is only two yeah so all these answers are two two and two the only one with three things really listed and billed is our answer which is C because we've got our CPR our directing EMS, and our critical care. That question may show up on somebody's exam. Find your headers for the very first sets of codes. Do you know what the headers are? For 99460, we know our 99291 is critical care, right? But what's these 99460 and 99466? What are those codes for? Nine nine four sixty six is critical care. Also, uh, inner facility transport of somebody that is uh, twenty four months or younger. Critical care transport for a youngin. Our four sixty is. E and M co code for a baby newborn admit hospital. Y'all have never heard of these boxes? Oh my gosh.
It's called Safe Haven Baby Boxes. They have um, locations in Arkansas, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, North Carolina, Florida, Kentucky, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Missouri, West Virginia, Alabama, Iowa, and Mississippi. So Nevada and Arizona don't have a baby box. And these are just actual, like, you, you know, when you drive up to a bank and they push out that big box, <laughs> it's kind of like that, but it's a pull-down drawer. You pull down the drawer, and inside that drawer is an actual, that kind of uh, see-through box that they wheel around at the hospital that brings you your newborn baby. So the baby won't roll out of there or anything. Anyway, if you deliver a baby at home or within, I don't know, of like, like four weeks or four months, 12 weeks old, 16-week-old baby, you decide that you want to put the baby up for adoption, but... You want it to be um, anonymous, and um, it's just a safe way, you know, for you to, here you go, put the baby in the box, the baby will be safe, you will not be prosecuted or hunted down to answer any questions, um, and they will take care of the baby, and... It will be just fine after that. They got a lot of sites in Ohio. Look how many boxes they got in Ohio. Good gracious. Tons of them. And Kentucky has some. Arkansas, Florida. New Mexico has a couple. Carolina. But they're pretty cool. They're inside of fire stations. And you can drop off the baby. And they also give you um, crisis stuff if you want it. You can have, um, you can even call them if you're just thinking about it and ask it help. They they try all other avenues before this is the last resort. Not that it is a last resort, but they do have other services available if you need help. But it's all 100% anonymous. And anyway, it's just an option. Instead of having the baby in a bathroom somewhere and walking away where you could get prosecuted for that, um, this is a safer way to do it so that you and the baby are both safe and you won't be prosecuted. So, you know, anyway, I just think it's a great idea. I did OB and delivery a long time. Some people would just come in, give a fake name, deliver the baby and leave and you know, that's fine, too. Um, but there wasn't any, like, way to protect yourself. Because if they do, I mean, there's lots of cameras in the hospital and stuff like that. So, you know, they could come after you not only for the billing, for the billing purposes of a hospital, but all kinds of other reasons to come after you. And that's not right, either. So, anyway, I just like the idea. I think it's great. Safe for you and safe for the kid. Right here. Are we doing an admit hospital E&M visit for a newborn? Are we in critical care? Or are we in critical care transport for a newborn? What are we billing here for this particular Kelly, all you got to do is in um, is get a house assessment and take some parenting classes through your state, and then you'll be signed up for being a Haven baby. But they may call you in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. and the social worker after the baby has been looked at at the hospital and made sure that they're healthy. And happy, they may just drop one at your doorstep at 2 in the morning with no supplies. <laughs> Where you got to go to Walgreens or something that's 24 hours and, and find something. But you never know. But it's very easy to become 
you know, you got to have a background check, you get your fingerprints done. Uh, Arizona makes it really cheap. When I adopted Travis, he was like $10,000, even though he was a private thing, there was no social workers involved or anything like that. It was still really expensive, and that was not paying the parents or anything. That was just paying the state to come in and inspect my home and when we lived there and to do my fingerprinting and all that kind of stuff and the, the court for the adoption. But Arizona, it's $500, and you can even get a grant to cover that for free. So James, my second one, was super cheap. <laughs> so it was great. Their, their house um, inspection and the court doesn't charge anything for adoptions at all. The, the judges volunteer their time for that, and they do it really cheap in Arizona. So it all depends on your state. But I took out a loan and on somebody's car, and we had garage sales. I even had um, fundraisers in the newspaper. Travis even sold all of his toys except for a Batman cape and a Tribble from Star Trek um, when he was four years old, somewhere around there. He's, we sold everything. We did yard sales forever and finally paid off his adoption. Um, I did all kinds of stuff through the city trying to help raise enough to adopt him and even did an interview in the newspaper for him. So y'all could find it if you look in some California newspaper and you look for an adoption where a kid says he sold everything except for his Star Trek Tribble. That'll be Travis. You'll see a picture of him. <laughs> but we did. We sat out there and I would have sold snow cones, whatever it was, lemonade on the side of the road. We, we fundraised forever to get him paid off. <laughs> Yeah, it should be cheap everywhere else. Absolutely. People can't afford, yeah. Well, a lot of kids are put in foster care, and then that is paid for for the states and stuff like that. Um, my st situation was unique. Both the boys were not put in foster care before I got them. They were just given to me by bio parents. said, here, take over. So then I had to file with the states to legally adopt them. And... The state had to give the parents their own lawyers and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of it, that's why uh, California was so expensive. I paid for their lawyers because they had to have representation. I had to pay for my own lawyer. But in Arizona, they don't require lawyers. You can go to court by yourself, and the court will appoint a lawyer for them and pay for it for itself. So each state does it differently. So it all depends. And the classes were free through the state of Arizona, but online classes and even in-person classes through Arizona was um, in-person only, and you had to pay for a teacher and all that kind of stuff. So it all gets expensive. It just depends. But if there's a will, there's a way. I even had my neighbors in California call the police on me and have me ticketed or told not to do any more garage sales because I didn't have a license to have garage sales at my house. So... You know, it all depends on what's going on in your neighborhood. You know, in Arizona, they would not care if you had a garage sale. But California has a lot of rules. You can't have a garage sale unless you contact your city and apply for a garage sale license and pay for a fee for that. And, you know, I had no idea. Not that I had too many. Just the very first one and only one, of course. The neighbors were like, Oh, I bet she doesn't have a uh, a uh, garage sale license. Let me shut her down. <laughs> it's crazy. What did you guys think about this one? We got A's and C's on this one. We've got a newborn who was born. Born premature in Arizona, 
and a pediatrician is in attendance to start administering while awaiting an ER in the ER for an air ambulance to probably a NICU somewhere else. So it sounds like a baby was born in the ER, right? Way too premature. So the baby did not get admitted yet. So we know we can't bill an admit code. So we're not gonna bill this one. This critical care code, 466, is also once the baby has been admitted to the hospital. So we can't bill that one. So this is all happening down in the ER. So we're gonna keep our critical care codes. And unlike adults who are in critical care, all this stuff that we do to the baby in the ER, I believe gets to get billed, right? If it's an adult, we probably wouldn't have gotten to be billing for this. Not that many adults get umbilical lines put in, but for babies, we get to bill this kind of stuff. So C is my vote. Yep. Yep, it's hard to believe. Travis in uh, high school now. And when we were trying to adopt him, yes, we had neighbors try to stop us <laughs> from having garage sales so I could pay off his lawyer fees. Yeah, it's crazy. But we did it. We got her all done. What about this one? We've got minimal, high, low, and moderate. Look how they mix them all up in different orders. We have a patient that has a UTI. They were given a prescription of antibiotic. What is the risk of complications for this patient? So they're not asking overall MDM. They're just, or the problem list or the data that was reviewed, they're only asking about the risk on this one. Well, check out their site. Their site is called Miss Anointed. Their site is called Safe Haven Baby Boxes. The lady that um, invented the company and all that stuff, it's a nonprofit, so everything y'all donate is um, tax deductible too. Y'all, um, and maybe you can get Louisiana a box. That would be awesome. A lot of the adoption classes now are all completely online. You don't have to go in person and sit in any classes. They're not very long anyway. Um, and then you just get your home inspection. Home inspections are no big deal. I clean my houses, you know, from top to bottom, inside closets, under beds, you name it. But both home inspections, they never left the kitchen area. <laughs> I was so disappointed because the kids, you know, we cleaned the whole house from top to bottom and, and then they don't even go into all the rooms and then check. I figured they would be checking for, you know, what's inside my bedside table or whatever. I don't know, but they never did open a drawer or nothing because they have these classes and tell you not to have sharp pointy knives that all your even your steak knives need to be rounded but they never even opened a drawer to look at my steak knives <laughs> i was so disappointed but it's okay they were all ended up being very nice people that came and did home inspections and they visit with you is all they do is sit at your kitchen table and they ask everybody are you happy about the adoption do you want to have another kid in the household? You know, that kind of stuff. And then they ask, are you prepared? Do you have a fire extinguisher? Do you have this? Do you have a plan? And that's it. An hour or two later, they're gone. 
and submit the form to the court and then you're able to adopt for a whole year and then you can do another home inspection once a year you don't have to do classes again um, but you just keep up your certification and then anytime they have a baby available they will call did y'all get the risk assessment for this one we got 10 more minutes do we know if our kid is minimal not our kid but our patient with the UTI with the Cipro are they all right I think my chat is slowing down Let's see if I can't get it to reboot there we go it's not hard at all until the ant stepped up. Oh, goodness. Aw, that's hard. Hmm. Single people can adopt all day long, too. No worries. This one is moderate because of the prescription being written. What do you guys think about the answer for this one? Check your headers for these codes. What is a 99347? What header is that under? Anybody know? Nine nine three four seven. It's an established patient for home, right? This one's straightforward. This one's low. This one's moderate. Or we no longer report them. What's going on with this patient? It is fun to see their faces light up. It's even fun to see it pout, you know? Good job, guys. It is B. What about this one? We've got all established visits. They're all here, just kind of mixed up, but they're all here. We have level two, minimal, we have a low, we have a moderate, and we have a high. This one's going to be two pages. We have bilateral lower extremity swelling. We have a patient going to be starting on new medication. They've scheduled a sleep study. Do we have a diagnosis? Uh, reviewed, but those were previously ordered, so we're not going to count those today. 
It may be a secondary problem. What in the world? Oh, pulmonary hypertension. Ethology is not clear at this time. So we have a problem with an unknown outcome. We don't know what's going on. So that's definitely moderate. We started on a new med, moderate. We ordered a test. It checks off one little box. What do you guys think? Are we moderate, high, low, minimal? What do you guys think? <laughs> 216. <laughs> I love that, Sophia. This one is D, it's a four, level four, because, let's see, um, this is a moderate, that is for our diagnosis, because we don't know our outcome, like I thought, and then the labs, we can't give credit to these, because we ordered them last visit, so we can't do nothing with that. So that's minimal, but the further study, we did additional testing and we gave them a prescription. So the prescription of warfarin is moderate for our doctor risk. So we've got two moderates and one minimal because our diagnosis is a moderate and our risk for the new prescription is moderate that leaves our CT and echo and other stuff minimal. So we just match those two, and that's how they came up with the 14. What about this one? We've got two admit hospitals, right? Or are they all three admit hospitals? What's our, yeah, 223? Yep, yep, yep. We've got admit hospital, and then we've got established patient office visit. So do we have two CPT codes? One, are we in the hospital? Are we in the office? What's going on? What's our last sign to say according to the guidelines? What is reported? We will be discharged home so that sounds like they were admitted right so we can at least get rid of C In the hospital, the provider ordered a CBC, an EKG, a chest X-ray. There we go with three. Right there. Started them on antibiotics. There's your risk. Kid was in the doctor's office and saw the patient in the doctor's office and decided to admit the patient. They did do an appropriate history and exam in both settings. Did not have a diagnosis for the doc for the office visit, just to rule out sepsis. 
So they'll probably have to do some symptoms if they bill that. But in the hospital, we can bill this, but in the doctor's office, we can't. Anyway, what do you guys think the answer is? Hey, Deep, good to see you. This one, we actually do get to bill both. We do get to bill A. Absolutely. And we'll put that 25 modifier on the second E&M visit to let the health plan know that this is a separate identifiable visit that we did do and complete along with this one. All right, we're not going to get done with all of them I thought we were going to get done with, but we'll do the rest on Thursday. Let's do one more. Don't worry about all those secondary codes. Let's worry about the first thing. Let's figure out if we are a 12 or if we're a 13. That'll get us down to a 50-50 shot first. All the last code is the same, so we don't have to worry about that. Do we have a time or an MDM listed? No. But we do have a patient that fell. And if you go to your chart on page 8 or 9 or 10 or 11, whatever book y'all are in, 9 or 10, where is a fall? A fall is... An acute, uncomplicated injury, right? That could either be low, moderate, or high, but it's not ever a two, right? Because the twos are under straightforward minimal. And under that, under problems addressed, the twos only have a self-limited minor problem listed. They don't have the acute uncomplicated injury. So we know we can get rid of A and C because even just falling is not located there. So we keep our threes. Now we just need to know, are we a 3-9 or a 3-3? Three, three? That's what I would look up the differences of because that would be the easiest. Only the three digits, right? That would be the easiest. S-3-3 three, three is under what header? S33 is under traumatic rupture of lumbar vertebral, dislocation sprain joint, ligament lumbar spine, or pelvis is S33. And S39 is... Other unspecified abdomen, lower back, pelvis. Mm -hmm. Are we in other? What happened? What did they give her? Low back muscle strain. We didn't dislocate anything. The ligaments and joints. That doesn't make much sense. They don't say anything about ligaments or joints. So I wouldn't do the, the D. I would do B. Yeah. Perfect. 
Good job. I hope this has been super helpful. I know E&M is super confusing. I'm sorry about the technical issues when I first started. Um, I just need to seriously reboot my computer. I have not rebooted it in probably two weeks, and then we were really overwhelming it today. We got new fiber optic internet, so we were both trying to stream. I had three of us streaming today and uploading and downloading all at the same time, playing with it just to see if we could make it crash, and we didn't. But when I got back on after doing all that, I didn't re reboot my system, and I left all those tabs and stuff open and then tried to stream again and yeah, that made the beginning very rough. So sorry about that. I will um, see you guys again on Thursday. Thank you so much for the donations for the baby box for Arizona. You guys are awesome. You really are. I love you all. You guys are awesome. We're going to be on TikTok tomorrow. We're going to do two hours of book prep. We did two hours of the female reproduction system yesterday. I already posted that up on YouTube. That's ready for you guys. Sorry I can't gift out the YouTube subscriptions tonight. I attached the donation box to tonight's live. For some reason, that gets rid of all the being able to donate or use any money in YouTube today for some reason. So live and learn. Live and learn, guys. But I hope this has been super helpful. I miss you guys. And thanks for the... Uh, yeah, on the CPT page. Yep, you'll find the acute injury. Yep, super helpful. Yep, yep, yep. Learning how to use utilize that chart on page 8 and 9 or 9 and 10, depending on which book you have, is super helpful. But it's hard, too. I still struggle with it sometimes. But just remember, injuries are always low, moderate, high. Easy peasy there. You're welcome, anointed. Thank you, guys. I will see you guys again tomorrow on TikTok. I hope to see you guys there. We'll do Q&A. You guys come with your questions, and I'll be able to answer them, too. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Christine. Love you, guys. I will see you again on Thursday here on YouTube and tomorrow on TikTok. I hope this has been helpful.